Thanks. Senator Warner. Mr. Chairman, thank you for being here. As, uh, <laughs> <laughs> as you know, you've been at, at the heart of this issue. You carry many, many flags for us in, in the law, national security law space, including 702. You've been quite a student of this issue, and we can't thank you enough for passing the bill this morning, uh, uh, for issuing the bill this morning, so that it's perfect for our panel. So with that, we'll give you the floor for you to explain your approach, and then we'll have some well, comments after. Well, thank you, and, and um, thanks to the ABA, thanks to the Public Interest Classification Board, thanks for good friends like Glenn Gerstle, who's sitting here helping on some of this. And I thought, you know, you were giving me great news. I thought if we pass the bill this morning, we can all go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best. Yeah, so, uh, and I, I really appreciate um, some rounds being here. Mike is a new member of the Intel Committee, but he's had distinguished service on the Armed Services Committee and, and really is an extraordinarily valuable member on this effort. I mean, how we got here, I think, you know, you guys probably are more familiar even than I am. This has been a a problem for years, but it kind of fits into that. I think fit for a long time in that category of it's a secondary problem, not a primary problem. Then we had a couple things happen. Um, one, um, we had, and this has been something we've been working on as well. It's not gotten very much attention, except for certain within certain communities. How we make sure we do a better. Um, screening process for people to, to receive security clearances in the first place. I mean, and I actually think the Trump administration was very helpful on this. We used to have 750,000 person backlog, hurt us in terms of recruitment, hurt us in terms of ability for folks uh, in the contractor space to do their job. We made progress on that, but boy, I didn't think it was going to be a four or five year process, but we're still chipping away. Then we had the problem more recently, last fall, of the potential misuse of documents by a former president or current president or former vice president uh, that kind of moved this moved, moved this issue. Then we had the, what I think was an extra spur was the um, recent leaks uh, that the Air Guardsman Teixeira um, appears to have been deeply involved in. All of that coalesced uh, a bipartisan group of us on the intelligence community to say it's time to actually um, put up a piece of legislation, or a couple of pieces of legislation, one a little more narrow, narrowly tailored, one that is, is much more extensive. And what we do in that legislation, and I think everybody's gotten a chance to take a look at it, and Mike, this is a group of uh, lawyers who will ask us all the details, so I'll be quick on that, my top end so you can get to the, the prodding and prying questions. Um, we said, first of all, somebody's got to be in charge. The idea that each and every agency sets their own criteria of what needs to be classified versus not classified really doesn't make any sense. And it, it's leading to that the tsunami of documents. It's leading to the things that everybody here has already mentioned. It's leading to the fact that we can't even share with our allies. Uh, we all agree, problem. So we um, picked, and there are a variety of places this could have landed, but we ended up saying the ODNI office ought to be the, the entity that's ultimately sets the standards and, and is the, the ultimate decider, number one. Number two, and, and this is, it was, is pretty aggressive, and, uh, and um, I know we've already given pushback, and I think if we'd done this bill, we'd get pushed back from whatever administration, because no administration wants to have this process meddled with by Congress. But number two, we put in a public interest test, where you have to, to weigh the public interest right to know versus the uh, the, the national security concerns. And that test, which was actually uh, originally uh, proposed by Senator Moynihan back in the 90s, uh, I think is a, is a great starting point. Because what we have right now, I think we all know, is a default to classification. Um, because it's just easier, it's an easier way to CYA. Um, and so there's, there's no actual impetus to, to not classify. So this public interest test makes sense. We put in place a a 25-year requirement that says, all right, you got to declassify after 25 years unless the president or an agency had, um, um, you know, gives a specific reason. Will it get everything declassified? I'm not ready to go there. I know some of my colleagues want everything mandatorily declassified. I think there could be cases still of sources and methods, but at least it, it puts the pressure on uh, on a declassification basis. It also says 
All right, let's, and this is again, this is, a, this is something I'm sure people can pick some holes in, but I think we're directionally right. It, we, in, in effect, almost put a taxation policy for agencies that overclassify. Now, we're not taking money away. We know that would never that'd be fully utilized, but it would say, all right, if there is this overclassification, those penalties would then be reallocated within that agency uh, to a fund for, for further modernization and, and digitization. Um, we also put in place, because of, of the situation with um, uh, the most recent leak, a, a requirement to have consistent insider threat programs in place. I, I think it is very safe to say, um, candidly, because of some of the mistakes that were made in the past at the NSA, uh, that the NSA's you know, insider threat process is, is because they've learned the lessons, was much stricter, and an insider threat process that ought to include um, you know, how often you use copy, and how often can you walk out with a bunch of documents without any requirement. You know, why in the heck does an IT specialist get to see all of these documents in the first place as opposed to just the header? I mean, this is kind of like 101, and I don't think, um, and I know there'll be some folks from DOD saying, no, we had best practice. I don't believe that at a national art facility, but, but you know, uh, we put that in. And then finally, we, something that's generated, uh, I think some of the initial press commentary, uh, which again is kind of a no-brainer in my mind, which says before a president or a vice president packs up their boxes, which we all know was kind of done in a hurried fashion and, you know, kind of arbitrary decisions about what a personal document is versus a, you know, classified document, you know, the general rule of thumb has been if it's classified, you can't call it a personal unless you affirmatively declassify that. But saying, let's let the archivist actually get a review. I think most folks who don't want to make a mistake on classification would welcome that assistance uh, to make sure they don't get themselves put in a place that ends up being slightly uncom uncomfortable. There is a host of other smaller pieces, um, but why don't I why don't I leave it there and are we going to go to Senator Rabbit? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Senator Rabbit.